So I know it's been some time since I posted any signal related videos to my YouTube channel. Um, but one thing I noticed I didn't uh, capture in any of my other videos is the video detection that's in my collection. So I figured this video could be about that. So you can see up here between these two signals I've got two cameras. One is aimed towards me now and the other one is aimed towards the corner of the signal room. Those are my video detection cameras that I have mounted up and active. Um, these cameras and detectors operate just like you would see at a real intersection. Um, not much is different other than the camera itself is not a traditional detection camera that you'd see out on the street and I'll get to that. Um, before I go any further I should note that uh, uh, these cameras at a real intersection or any even this display uh, they don't record they don't aren't used for surveillance they uh, they simply take in a live video feed and within that feed a certain zone is drawn in and that zone is checked for change in pixels and when that pixel uh, changes to a degree or that that image is changed to a degree that places the call that tells the controller to place a call for a green light or extend the green time so there's no recording there's no ability to record on the system so we'll go ahead and uh, take a closer look so here are the cameras up close as you can see these are not full-sized detection cameras you'd see hanging over a street these are actually closed circuit TV cameras that I bought from Radio Shack way back in the day um, but they function just as the official cameras would do there's a coaxial input and a power supply and uh, it picks up a live video feed so that's all the soft all the software needs in in the cabinet is a live video image so these are uh, Swan brand and again got them from Radio Shack a hundred years ago when there were Radio Shacks around and I've had them since then so let's take a look at the cabinet and see the processor and how it works all right here we are in the cabinet this is the video processor. This is an iTerris Vantage Edge 2 video processor card which is plugged into my standard TS2 uh, rack, detector rack. And you can see that there's several lit up uh, LEDs, indicators, on the front of the uh, video card. The green one that you see right, uh, right there, that's just a power indicator. It says online. Um, you've got two yellow indicators down here that you, down here that you can can't really read very well but both of them say video in and OK so here's the two inputs from each of the two cameras as well as an output to a, uh, a video screen so you can program it this uh, connector here with the green and the flashing little yellow um, indicator is for an extension module that's what EM stands for if it comes out so you can hook up extension uh, cards so that you can add more uh, detectors to the card and then you've got two USB ports depending on the USB uh, that you're plugging into so the mo a mouse would plug into I use USB A so you use a mouse to draw in the detection zones in the video picture and you got a red button up here that's the menu button if you push it momentarily when we plug in the monitor it'll switch between cameras if you push and hold it it will allow you to configure that particular camera and then there are four switches, little toggle switches up here that are used for testing and if you lift it down, if you press the switch down or pull the switch down you can send a test call to that particular detector input middle is off up is momentary so that's uh, the front of the card so we'll plug in the video uh, monitor and uh, we'll take a look at that. Alright, I've got a video cable plugged into the video output as you can see here. I had to get a connector, special connector for it so that I can mate with the BNC connector on the on the iTerris card. And here is the video image on camera number one. This is the camera that's operating if you can recall the back wall signals and the flashing yellow arrow. So that's that camera. Um, 
And as you can see, I just have a standard run-of-the-mill DVD player, uh, portable DVD player, that is pulling this. So you just need something to pull in the video feed. So you can see, it's hard to tell on the camera, but you can see P4, P4, and P3. So this is phase four, phase four, phase three, through, through, left. That's how that works. Um, for some reason, the, this particular card never holds the date, so it shows January 1st, 2000 for some reason, but it doesn't affect the doesn't affect the performance of the card. But you can see that that's the picture. Now, if I go down here and I push this this menu button, I'll go back up here to show it. Just pull, push it momentarily. There's video uh, camera number two. That's the one aiming towards the side wall. So you can also see that it says I have it labeled. This is side street. You can see there's phase two, phase one, phase one being the left turn, phase two being the through. And just going back to the main camera here, you can see I have it labeled as main street cam. So, so if I go over, and I don't know how well this is going to come out on a camera, but I'll try to go into the image. Here, let's go on video card, video number two. Maybe it's a little easier. Walk in front of the, there's me. Walking in front of the detector. You can see that the, whoop, I mean at the wrong thing. See the red LED came on on the video card. So it's it's picking me up in the spot. I can get out of the way or move back and forth. The light will go on and off for that phase. Same thing over here. I'll do my best to show it. I think it came up. There it is. You can see that LED came on for phase, uh, I believe that's phase three, the flashing yellow arrow. So, those are the different phases. I'll try to capture it here on the screen. Oh, there's the zone. See how the zone comes up on phase two? I walk out of it, it goes away. Walk back into it, it captures me. So all it's really doing is I drew in a zone, a rectangle, and that, and within that rectangle, the picture has to be, well, the background is learned, and then whatever is within that zone that's been learned, and if it changes, that's considered a uh, a valid detector call. So it can be a vehicle, it can be motion, it can be anything that's large enough to detect. Now, when these cameras are mounted way up high, it's a little harder to detect people versus cars because of the size, because these cameras are so far low to the ground and might display. It's treating it almost like it is a vehicle. It's enough pixels to change to register it as a valid call. So we'll go through the some of the functions of this detector here in, uh, in a short minute. All right, now I plugged in a mouse. You can see there's a USB cable here. Let's plug into a mouse. I don't have a whole lot of room here to work with, so I'm just going to use the top of my uh, tech panel on the cabinet to demonstrate this. So we're going to go back to... We're going to go back to camera number one for this, just for something different. And now we have to press and hold the menu button, as mentioned prior. And there are the zones. So we're now in the configuration mode. You can see there's three zones, like I no noted earlier. You've got two through zones and a left zone. So they're basically in a standby state now. And you can see at the bottom of the screen, you've got add, edit, move, delete, load, camera, diagnostic, a few others there. I think module, clock, utilities, and quit. So using the mouse, I try to do this with my right hand, you can uh, add zones. So you can add a zone here. Now when you add a zone, you got to give it a label, so which output it's going to use. There's four outputs on this card, so I've got four phases, four outputs. If you needed additional outputs, you need additional cards, or you need a card that has additional outputs. So iTerrace has got a single camera, dual camera, I believe they have a quad camera, or they did at one point. So there's different um, labels. Direction, any, or down, 
or any. So down is downstream. So when it, you set it to down for direction, that's essentially saying that it's only going to detect downstream vehicles as, as or anything downstream that's coming towards the camera. Anything that's going away from the camera, it won't detect. So vehicles going away from the camera, away from the intersection, will not be, or, or through the intersection, will not be detected on opposing cameras. So any is good for a basement display because it allowed a detection in any direction. Uh, input, you can use whatever processor. Well, I guess the label is the label of the detector zone, um, zone, so that's the name you give it. Input is where it's coming from, whether it's going to be from processor 1, 2, 3, or 4, or none. Um, the type of detector. Presence is the, is the common detector that's, uh, you know, standard. The vehicle comes up, it, uh, the controller it establishes its presence. So you've got different ones here. I'm not exactly sure what all of these are. This is an extension detector, specifically for extension. This is a demand detector. This is a passage one. I'm not sure what CSO is. But you can see there's different ones. Count is a, basically it counts the number of vehicles going through. That's used for more flexible, progressive uh, systems where it's counting vehicles as they go through, uh, platoons of vehicles going through the series of intersections. It's able to count and store that data. A byte detector and then none. So there's a few others and then presence. So they kind of, that's, that's uh, essentially what the uh, different modes are. So drawing in a detector, you now I can I've created one even though it doesn't have any anything attached to it as far as uh, functions. You can create a detector. You can see kind of an arrow on the screen. Here's a second arrow. Click, click, click. There's our new detector. So you just draw that over the lanes if it was a real intersection, or you draw it across the floor if it's my basement. If I wanna, if I wanna edit it, I can edit the zone, it says to select the zone I want to detect, I think I'm going to move my mouse up here, it's way easier so now I clicked on the zone, I can make any adjustments to that zone if I want to delete the zone it says to select the zone and now it's gone so you can switch between camera 1 and camera 2 using the software, you don't have to hit the menu button, here's camera 2 again and camera 2 is also in standby mode We'll go back to camera one. Um, there's some diagnostic, I'm not going to go through all of these here, it's diagnostic stuff. There's a clock and date setting, a utility setting, and Q is for quit. So you can save it as three separate configurations. You have three separate uh, software, there's three separate uh, functions within the video card that you can select from. So you can have like a main intersection, you can have a temporary intersection, and something else or you cannot save it so we're not going to save it so now we're back now I hit quit no save we're back to live video feed waiting for the detectors to get an input so there you go there you have it that's how the video detection works and again there's no way to record there's no way to store the video it's all real-time uh, video input so when you go up to a real intersection out on the road you don't have to worry about it uh, watching you.